Hello fellow robotics researchers, I'm Harry Zeng from UC Berkeley Automation Lab, and I'm going to present our work on DexNet AR, Distributed Deep Grass Planet using a commodity cell phone and augmented reality app. Here are some motivations for our work. Grasping is a crucial task in robotic manipulation. Both learning-based and non-learning-based methods rely on depth image generated by an expensive and high-quality depth, depth camera. Augmented reality, which was first put together at Armstrong Lab in 1992 to train U.S. Air Force pilots, is an interactive experience of real-world environment where objects in the real world can be enhanced by a computer. Moreover, AR allows 3D objects to be placed in the scene. Under the hood, the software constructs a 3D representation of the scene using an RGB camera and its motion. In 2017, Apple released ARKit free development kit that allows AR to be run on iPhones. Thus, if we could somehow leverage the 3D representation generated by AR, but not using an expensive depth camera at all, then iPhone users will be able to generate data that can be used in existing grasp planning tools, such as DexNet, to generate robust grasps. Moreover, there are more than 100 million iPhone users in the world, which would also give us a wide user space from which we can collect data to improve training of grasp analysis tools. While traditional grasp analysis approaches rely on single top-down view depth image, by using 3D point cloud generated by ARKit, we can potentially find more robust grasps with a better geometric information of the object. Here are some related work in the fields of point clouds, AR, and structure from motion. ARKit utilizes these techniques to capture point clouds. Our work is also tied closely with previous work on grasping such as DexNet, develop, developed right here at Automation Lab. We also took inspiration from multi-view grasp analysis since we wish that 3D geometry reveals more valuable information about the grasps. So putting these ideas together, we propose a system that uses ARKit run on the iPhone to reconstruct the three-dimensional representation of the object which can then be used to generate and analyze grasp from multiple viewpoints via DexNet. We formulate our problem as follows. The input data of our system are RGB images from an iPhone camera, which will then be used to extract point cloud data by ARKit. With point cloud, we can transform them into depth maps by projecting them from arbitrary viewpoints, and output a DexNet grasp quality. Note that our fundamental assumption here is that we only deal with singulated objects on the table surface. Now, let me introduce the system pipeline. First, we record RGB images using the iPhone. Then ARKit extracts noisy point clouds from a series of images. We then clean up the noisy point cloud, obtaining a cleaner point cloud. Then using some predefined viewpoints, we project the clean 3D point clouds into depth maps. Finally, we feed the synthetic depth images into DexNet and plant grasps. Let us elaborate each step in the, in the pipeline. First, when recording RGB images, we walk around an object while taking a sequence of images of the object from different views. We need to sufficiently capture the object's geometry, and we should also make the motion stable in order to reduce drifting. Next, ARKit will extract point clouds from each image in a sequence and stitch them together, forming a full 3D representation of the object. Currently, we are using ARKit as a black box, since it is fully optimized for iPhones, but we cannot directly tweak the algorithm to obtain higher quality point cloud data. Under the hood, ARKit uses structure from motion and sift to capture the point clouds. The dimensions of the object are approximated by hardware called IMU. However, as mentioned above, the point cloud data recorded by ARKit is super noisy because it tends to capture noise from the table surface and the walls. ARKit fails to capture data from featureless objects, such as monochromatic, small, or reflective objects. Therefore, we wish to post-process the data by cleaning them. Here we show an example of the noisy point cloud data that ARKit collects. To clean the point cloud data, we need to first filter out the noise from the table plane by fitting a plane equation using RANSAC. 
Then we use a KNN algorithm to remove the outliers in order to get rid of the noise and outliers from the object itself. We chose KNN because outliers points are, are lot sparser than the object's points. Here we show an example for the data cleaning process. The original object is on the left, the raw noisy point cloud from ARKit is in the middle, and the clean data is on the right. To generate depth maps from point clouds, we use PyRender to load the 3D point clouds and project them into depth maps based on nine predefined different viewpoints of a synthetic Foxy camera, which is specified by the camera intrinsics matrix. Among the nine depth maps, we have one top-down view, four 45 degrees views, and four 90 degrees views. Here we show some generated depth maps. We place nine synthetic depth cameras around the object and render depth maps based on the nine predefined viewpoints. Now, let's talk about grass planning method, DexNet. Long story short, it takes in a depth image of the object and samples all possible grasps using cross entropy method. Then it outputs the best grasp, which is specified by the grasp center and the grasp depth based on the confidence level of the grasp. What we're gonna do now is that we pass in all nine depth images from nine viewpoints and find the grasp with the highest Q value. Let's look at experiments. We used nine 3D printed objects, which were originally used to train DexNet. For each object, we capture five full point clouds and we render nine depth maps for each point cloud based on the nine viewpoints. Therefore, we have 45 point clouds and four, 405 depth maps in total. Here we show the results of DexNet on all nine objects. The images on the top row are the ground truth objects and the middle row are the point clouds, and the bottom row are the plant grasp from the best viewpoint, which has the highest Q value. Note that object 9 is a failure case because it is too reflective. Now, let's analyze the results of single view grasps and multi view grasps. Specifically, we compare ground truth depth images and AR based depth images. Using an example of object 3, we see that Foxy depth camera is only able to capture top down view depth, thus limiting the degrees of freedom and even grasp robustness. We also see that the top-down plant grasp also collided with the nose and ear areas of the Yoda model. In contrast, the sideways grasp plant by Dexnet AR avoided those areas, resulting in a more robust grasp. In conclusion, we have proposed a system using commodity hardware and AR software on our iPhone to capture the point clouds. After some proper cleaning, we generate depth maps of the object from arbitrary viewpoints. Then we have shown that ARKit-based depth maps can indeed be used for grasp analysis in DexNet. However, one drawback in the existing system is that data collection process is very slow, and we are working on showing it at a time. In terms of next steps and future work, we would like to improve the system accordingly. First, from the per perception part in our pipeline, we are currently looking into faster learning-based 3D reconstruction methods, such as Learn Stereo Machine, or LSM for short. We also want to add support for Android devices, which requires a different mobile AR framework called AR Core. We are also working on generating better synthetic RGB and depth images from categorized 3D meshes as training data for downstream training tasks. Also, in the DexNet aspect, we are training a Dex DexNet policy to generate grasps from arbitrary viewpoints using LSM predicted depth maps. Thank you all for listening to my presentation, and I look forward to answering questions. Feel free to send me your point clouds to my email, and if you want to try out the point cloud recording app on your own, please visit the project's GitHub page. More details are in the paper and we welcome collaboration. Thank you.